Hey everyone, welcome to Uno Dose of Trace. I am Trace. Daylight savings time is based on a false assumption. We do this every year where we spring forward and we fall back, and we spring forward and we fall back, but we could just stop. We should just stop. We just switched from daylight savings time to standard time. And not only does switching from summertime to regular time make life more difficult and more complicated, there's evidence that it literally kills people. California voted to abolish daylight savings, and to that, I say no thank you, sir, madam, people. I say no because standard time is terrible. The sunset on the summer solstice, the longest day of the year, would be 7.35 p.m. That sounds terrible for summer. Ugh, no, no, no. Instead, let's just keep daylight savings time forever, endless summer time. If we adopt daylight savings forever, it is always lighter later, always. It's just sometimes dark earlier. There are a bunch of arguments for daylight savings, and I'm gonna go through each one. And some of them go back centuries, but they're all pretty much wrong. And I'm gonna tell you why they're wrong and also why we should just stop doing this to ourselves. So get ready to alohomora all of these arguments. That didn't make any sense. Hey there, second law of thermodynamicists, Trace here, and I've been thinking about daylight savings for a while. Happy Halloween, by the way, it's why I'm in costume, I gotta go to a Halloween party later. Before we kick into it, this week I have a quick favor. Look up your favorite episode of Una Dose of Trace and share it. Facebook it, tweet it, put it on Snap or Insta Story, whatever, but share it. It's the best way to grow the channel, and that is the goal for this, is to make it big enough that it can be self-sustaining. So give it a share, it'll really help, and thank you. Daylight savings is a result of our creation of time. Time is a construct, we invented it, it doesn't actually exist. Yeah, yeah, time passes, second law of thermodynamics, everything increases in entropy on our inevitable march toward the heat death of the universe, but seconds, minutes, hours, these concepts were created to make society run smoother and more efficiently. They're not constant. In ancient Rome, they recognized that the days were longer in the summer, so they just made hours longer to accommodate for that. A Roman summer hour was 75 minutes, and a winter hour was only 45 minutes. Like all human things, our approximations of nature are imperfect, and today we adopt a daylight savings time, or summer time, to approximate a solution for the same problem. The days are longer in the summer. The reason of this is the Earth. The northern hemisphere summer seems longer because of the tilt of the Earth as we orbit the sun. The Earth's movement in space also contributes to the shifting of sunset and sunrise over the year. Our chasing of the sun around the clock was first suggested by Ben Franklin, but it was never implemented by him. You're probably thinking that we switch time because of some ancient or old agrarian society thing, right? Farmers, are, But that's actually a big myth. Full-time farmers don't need to move time around, and in fact, in 1919, when daylight savings was first adopted, it was later repealed, we're gonna come back to that, farmers were against it. Moving the clock actually harms farmers, because if you milk the cows at 5 a.m. and then we fall back, it's 4 a.m., and the cows still wanna be milked at that same time. Them cows still need milking, said a dairy farmer just has to get up earlier to milk them cows. It's the way it goes. So if it's not farmers, why do we do this? Capitalism. But to get to that takes a minute, so we have to go back to the late 19th century when we stopped using sun time and we switched into standard time. For most of our history, clocks were not synced with each other. Instead, some person set the clock in the center of town to noon or rang the town bell so we could all set our watches when the sun was right overhead. That was noon. This means each town had its own time. It was called sun time or God's time in the US, no surprise there. This time was different everywhere. Every town at different latitudes and longitudes would have a different noon and thus a different time of day. This is an 1872 pocket diary that includes how to convert Boston time to other places. A Bostonian heading to Detroit, for example, would subtract 47 minutes and 56 seconds from their watch to be on Detroit time. The state of Wisconsin had 38 different times. And I'm sure this would be very confusing if you were traveling around Wisconsin trying all the cheese. But in the 19th century, that wasn't too much of a problem because we didn't have a society that relied on specific meeting times, like down to the minute or to the second. There were no tight deadlines like that. But as trains and faster modes of transportation were invented, we needed a better, more standardized way to measure time. And there was pushback 
but eventually governments adopted a standard time. And this was a huge shift for humanity as a whole. We divested ourselves from the sun. We created this imperfect time system separate from nature, and we were running into problems. Under sun time, the sun's position was determining noon every day. It was literally noon. And throughout the year, the length of the day would change, and we'd move noon around, keeping in sync with the length of the day. The middle of the day would still be the middle. But without that movement, we started to have problems. And for the first time in history, the sun was out of sync with how we were living our lives. A British builder named William Willett noticed on a morning horse ride, allegedly, that people were sleeping when the sun was up. And like a lot of annoying morning people, he was all like, I'll get it, wake up and do something. He felt that we needed to shift the hour to wake people up. This was called Willett's Summertime. He pitched it to Parliament, and it would encourage the British people to get up and be more active and outdoorsy, and Parliament rejected it. <laughs> Turns out, governments don't really care about people being active, but they do care about money. When Ben Franklin suggested daylight savings time, he thought if it were lighter later, we would burn fewer candles and save on energy. During World War I, Germany established a summer shift to do exactly that burn less fuel. Allegedly, they wanted to save energy, so they would shift the clock. And once they passed it, Britain did too, and so did other European countries and the United States. I'm sure Willett would have been very pleased. And this was the first adoption of daylight time, as I mentioned earlier. It was repealed after the war. During World War II, we all adopted it again, and it expired six months after the war ended. No one wanted daylight savings time. Throughout the following decades, daylight savings was tried a few more times, like during the oil embargo to save energy in the 70s, and selectively by some states and towns. Each area started and ended daylight savings time on different days, or they just ignored it, making things very confusing for train scheduling and for TV broadcasters. Every region still had its own weird time, until in 1966, Congress passed the Uniform Time Act, which said if you adopt summertime, it has to be from April to October. That's when it was. It was either an up or down vote. And they did this to keep it simple, but also to save energy. The U.S. Department of Transportation says today on their website, energy consumption is the purpose of daylight savings. It saves energy. But what if I told you the whole energy saving thing that the 18th century Ben Franklin assumption that actually doesn't save any energy. A 2008 study from the National Bureau of Economic Research found that daylight savings time actually, quote, increases residential electricity demand. And in the fall, it increases it the most by two to 4%. Another study in Australia found the same result, no energy savings. They were able to do this because until 2006, Indiana didn't use daylight savings time. So the researchers looked at how much energy people were using before summertime adoption and then after, and it turns out lighter later doesn't really save energy. And they say in the study that places further south of Indiana might have worse energy consumption using daylight savings time. It might be worse in the south. If the whole premise is wrong, then why do we still do this? Capitalism, my friends. Saving energy is a red herring. It doesn't matter if it's real or not. But another major reason for adopting daylight savings time is being more active, right? We'll be outside more. We have altered daylight savings time multiple times since 1966 when it was adopted. The most recent one was the Energy Policy Act of 2005. We made daylight savings time longer, stretching it from early March until early November. And why is that? Because of shopping. Retailers lobbied Congress hard to extend daylight savings in the 2000s because later sunset times encourage people to visit stores and restaurants and they allegedly would spend money. The Department of Transportation says they want to make people more active, i.e. they want people to go out and do things. And what do people do when they go out in the US at least? They spend dollars. But to be honest, this isn't a thing either. Consumer spending does increase slightly after the spring daylight savings time shift, but the drop after the fall shift actually outweighs it. So there's still no real reason to do this. The third reason on the Department of Transportation website and another commonly cited reason to keep daylight savings time is reduction in crime. Some say that daylight savings reduces crime and sexual assault because fewer people are out in the dark of the evening. You know, it's dark, 
So crime happens. And a study in the Review of Economics and Statistics from 2015 found during daylight savings, when it is lighter later in the evening, robberies are reduced by 7%. They also looked at rape and aggravated assault and murder, but they didn't find a statistical significance with any of those, although there were suggestions of it. So energy savings, no, not so much. Consumption, no, not so much. Activity, we're not actually more active. We do drive more, causing more fuel use and pollution, but we don't buy more stuff, so no. It's not just that there's not a benefit. Switching the clock is actively harming us. When we lose an hour of sleep or shift our sleep schedule, that hour comes out of our sleep somehow. In the spring especially, right? You either go to bed earlier, you wake up later, you feel groggy, things just don't match up. We're more like the cows in the farmer's example. We need to be milked at the same time every day, no matter what actual time it is. It takes us many weeks to get over this, and this has real economic effects. Studies, lots of them show DST-related sleep deprivation causes more traffic crashes, workplace injuries, lower productivity, poorer stock market trading, and here's the kicker, it could actually kill you. A Finnish study found an 8% increase in stroke the days after the switch. And here in the overworked and underslept US of A, there is a 24% increase in heart attack risk the Monday after daylight savings time begins in the spring. In the fall, the extra hour of sleep results in a 21% reduction in heart attack risk, which is great, but falling back isn't that better. It still messes with our sleep schedules, causing problems that reverberate through the rest of our lives. Now, I'm not the first person to come to this conclusion, but let's put all this together. If this is actively harming us, you know, the switching back and forth, and there are no consumption, energy, or activity bonuses, then why shift the clock back and forth at all? I say don't. I say adopt daylight savings time forever. My suggestion, endless summertime. You ready for this? I'm a Ravenclaw, so I've thought this through. Instead of falling back next year, we just don't. It's lighter later all year round. Let's use DC as an example because it's at a middle latitude. On average, the sun sets in DC at 5.16 p.m. in the winter and 8.31 p.m. in the summer. If we sprung forward and we never fell back, it would be lighter later in the winter. The sun wouldn't set until 6.16 p.m. People might even be out of work by then. With permanent daylight savings, people would get out of work and they might still be able to see daylight or twilight. There are downsides to this, of course. Later sunrises. So at the winter solstice, it's the shortest day of the year, go to Seattle, a high latitude, and you would see an 8.55 a.m. sunrise, which is not the best, and I, I warrant that. But morning twilight, which is when it starts getting light, that's at 7 a.m. So it's not dark at 8 a.m., it's just the sun isn't above the horizon yet. It's a compromise. Another downside bar, if you will, I'm not actually a parent yet, but lobbying groups argue that abolishing daylight savings time or adopting endless summer time would mean kids might be waiting for the bus to go to school in the dark. And that's not great. I totally see also not great, but there's a solution for that. Later school start times. Literally everyone wants this. There's lots of research that says kids learn better, are more attentive and get better grades with later start times. And if you pick the right one, they're not waiting in the dark. Endless summertime, later start times. This sounds like a utopia. Legal and school bar. So daylight savings. We do it now because of assumptions and historical precedent, but we have light later at night and we get all the benefits and fewer of the failures if we just stop switching. Switching time costs money and productivity and healthcare and car crashes, even the computer systems we have to build to accommodate for the switch and the record keeping to make sure that we know whether this was the first 1.30 a.m. or the second 1.30 a.m. All of that costs money and time. We're living in summertime already now from March to November. We only use standard time for a third of the year. And it just seems like by the time you get used to it, it's over. So why not just get rid of it? It's worth a try, right? Let's spring forward one last time and never fall back. One more quick thought. What about double daylight savings? You know, double sunsets at 10.30 p.m. You could be out forever. More on that in the Easter egg in the description. What do you think of all this? Would you rather keep daylight savings forever, abolish it, just keep doing what we're doing now? What do you guys think? Let me know. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you learned something. I know that I did while researching it. I am Trace, and I will see all you muggles in the future.